Hey, and welcome to Lemon Tree Hotels Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listening mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation completes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now on the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CBR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Lemon Tree Hotels Q2 and H1 FI22 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us today Mr. Patanjali Keswani, Chairman and Managing Director; Mr. Ratan Keswani, Deputy Managing Director; Mr. Kapil Sharma, Chief Financial Officer. And Mr. Vikramjit Singh, President of the company. We will begin the call with brief opening remarks from the management. Following which, we will have a forum open for an interactive question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation that was shared with you earlier. I will now request Mr. Keswani to make his opening remarks. Thank you, Anu. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the call. I hope you and your close ones are keeping safe and healthy. I'll be covering the quarterly business highlights and the financial performance for the quarter and the half year ended September 30th, 21. Post which we'll open the forum for your questions and suggestions. We saw a significant recovery in performance against the previous quarter due to a improvement in demand. The gradual easing of lockdown restrictions, improved vaccination coverage, a growing sense of normalcy in the domestic market has led to improved confidence and therefore booking, which has improved week on week since the start of Q2 FY22. Overall, our occupancy on full inventory improved from 30% in Q1 this year to 51% in the second quarter. Our room rates too witnessed a growth of 28.2% from 2362 in Q1 to 3028 in Q2 this year. Going forward with the con continued improvement in demand, our focus will be on increasing our room rates over the next two quarters. Overall, during this quarter, our net EBITDA grew by 1647 percent to rupees 35.8 crores in Q2, from 2 crores in Q1. Our EBITDA margins expanded by 3159 BPS. From 36 uh, to 36.2 percent in this quarter, from 4.6 percent in the previous quarter. Regarding growth, I'm pleased to share that we commissioned three new hotels under management contracts during this quarter. These include our entry into Kurk with 63 rooms, and it's our first managed resort under the brand Orica. Our first franchise property under the Keys Prima flag in Dehradun, which is 40 rooms, and a Red Fox hotel in Nilkan, which is 80 rooms. These hotels are in sync with our strategy to go asset light by expanding the managed hotels vertical and leveraging our brand. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have operationalized 10 hotels, which have added more than 700 rooms to our portfolio. Our current operational inventory, as of 21st October 2021, comprises of 87 hotels and about 8,500 rooms, of which 4,517 are owned, 675 leased, and 3,305 managed. Over the last two quarters, we have also focused on various ESG-related initiatives to build a responsible hotel company with a business model that strikes the right balance between financial outcomes and running our operations in a diverse, inclusive, and environmentally friendly manner. We are happy to share that Lemon Tree is working towards quantified goals for 2026, which including which include targeting 30% opportunity-deprived Indians. And 15% women in our workforce, 15% reduction in our energy consumption intensity, with a 50 with 50% of our total energy consumption from renewable sources, a 40% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, a 10% reduction in water consumption intensity, and 100% certification of green buildings in our full owned and leased portfolio. Energy water and GHG targets are visibly baseline here, 2019. Towards this, we published our first sustainability report, focusing on environmental, social, economic, and governance parameters. This has been prepared in accordance with global reporting standards and is uploaded on our website. Going forward, our endeavour will be to focus on enhancing our ESG systems and disclosures. 
Now, from a demand perspective, we have seen a very strong uptick in consumption on the retail and leisure front, which continues to strengthen on a month-over-month -month basis. With some offices reopening, we are also seeing steady recovery in business travel. As we look ahead, improving macros and the upcoming festive and wedding season, we believe should further support this traction. Overall, in a normalized macro environment, we are very confident of reporting robust and sustainable performance in the quarters ahead. On that note, I come to the end of our opening remarks and would now like to ask the moderator to open the line for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Amandeep Singh from Ampit Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, firstly, why is the recovery for hotels X keys has been well across occupancy and profitability? We note that Keys portfolio continues to struggle on a relative basis. So, consequently, can you help us with your thoughts here and by when do you expect Keys to turn around assuming that things would continue to improve year on? So, Keys owned portfolio Amandi is a, a little under a thousand rooms, of which over, uh, 200, over 250 rooms are in Kerala. And Kerala as a market has been completely demolished by COVID even now. So it is struggling to uh, get any form of recovery. Another large uh, number is about uh, 400 rooms in Bangalore, uh, of which 230 rooms, I think, are in Whitefield. Whitefield is another market which is heavily dependent on not only large corporates, but IT in specific, large IT companies. So <clears throat> these, uh, these, you know, this large chunk of inventory, 200, 250 rooms in Kerala, 250 rooms in uh, Whitefield have been struggling to perform. So if you notice, even in our city-wise performance, when we mentioned Bangalore, you'll see Bangalore as well has still not recovered to the levels others have. And we are seeing this recovery for these two markets only happening from Q4 this year. Sure, sir, and just continuing on that, uh, on micro markets, we note that Gurugram and Bangalore uh, continue to struggle because of exposure to uh, business travel. Uh, and on the last call, we remember you indicated that large corporate are expected to travel, say, in September, October. And also on ground, what we are understanding is that the mice in these markets is picking up with increasing staycation. So are you at least seeing uh, uh, the improvement here on? Can you just uh, give a couple of... Uh, comments on that for these two markets specifically? So I am seeing a bigger improvement currently in Gurgaon where the mix is less IT dependent. In Bangalore, the mix is heavily IT dependent. So, you know, typically, say in Gurgaon, 25% of our business or 30% of our business comes from IT. In Bangalore, it's closer to 50%. So, specifically, this segment has been heavily affected. The second segment which has been heavily affected is large corporates. So large corporates are still, uh, are, are, well, if you read the papers, most of them are announcing that they will start post-Diwali. Half are announcing post-Diwali start and the other half post-January. So we reckon that, uh, uh, you know, when later I will talk to you about our segments pre-COVID and post-COVID and you will understand on an all-India basis some very interesting trends are emerging. So since you asked this question, I will expand it into an all-India perspective. If you look at pre-COVID, which is specifically January and February 2020, our retail demand was 1,200 rooms per day. Today, it is, well, in Q2, it hit 1,500. In Q3, it is now trending towards 1,800. So you can see an enormous improvement in retail. In fact, retail today, uh, compared to pre-COVID, is 45% to 50% over what it was pre-COVID. Then we have COVID-related business, which was obviously zero pre-COVID. In Q2, it is 180 rooms a day. In Q3, now it looks to be less than half. When you look at corporates, and I'm including large and small, micro, medium, all of them, they used to account for about 1,500 rooms pre-COVID. 
In Q2, it was 650. Right now, it is trending at 800. Travel trade, which is large blocks, conferences, and so on, which was 350 rooms pre-COVID, was 150 in Q2 and is now 260. Others, which include airlines and so on and so forth, which was 150 pre-COVID, was 75 in Q2 and is now over 100. So if, you, if I summarize, our total demand pre-COVID was about 3,200 rooms a day, dropped to 2,650 in Q2, and is now over 3,000 rooms a day. So there is a clear pickup. Uh, as far as ARR goes, pre-COVID, our ARR was about 4,800 rupees. In Q2, it was about 3,000. Today, we are trending towards 3,600. So really, what I see happen is this too, that is Q3 will be a transit month. And I think you will see, a, well, a very clear recovery and some stabilization by Q4, which should then continue into the next financial year. Sure, sir. That's really helpful. Thanks. Thanks for the detailed uh, explanation. And so lastly, if I could squeeze in one more. Uh, so remember during the last call, you mentioned about a couple of firms evaluating distress opportunity where you would be looking to uh, forward, looking forward to brand and manage those inventories. So any update over there? Plenty of stuff happening, but I don't want to give an update uh, till I give an update to our board. So if you'll forgive me, Amandi, uh, you'll have to wait for a couple of months. Sure, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. And all the best. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Adhijit Chattupadhyay from ICSA Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So the first question is on our margin. So we have recovered to, I think, uh, mid-30s and uh, plus uh, in this quarter. So with demand normalizing, so when, by when do you think you'll see the full impact of the cost reductions we have taken? And uh, once revenues do recover to pre-COVID levels, possibly sometime, I don't know, by fourth quarter or early next year, where do you think the EBITDA margins should uh, settle at? Thank you. Okay, again, I want to avoid giving forward-looking statements, so I'll go back for a moment. Pre-COVID, we had stabilized in the three months of December, January, and February 2020, our average income every day was about 2.4 crores a day. Our PBT was happening at 2 crores. So basically, every day we were making 40 lakhs PBT. Cash break even, including interest, was at 1.8 crores. And cash plus repayment of principal was 2 crores. So interestingly, our cash break even, including repayment of principal and PBT, were about the same at 2 crores. So this is pre-COVID, when we were doing 2.4 crores a day. Now in Q2, we've done a little over 1 crore a day. Our PBT break even in Q2 would have occurred at 1.45 odd crores a day, which is a drop of 55 lakhs from pre-COVID. Our cash break even, which is where the EBITDA margin expansion would happen, would have occurred at 1.15 crores a day. And our cash plus repayment break even would have occurred at 1.4. Now, what is, how is this changing? So, the Q3 expectation is that my, our PBT will occur at 1.6 crores, cash break even at 1.25, and cash plus repayment at 1.5. Our expectation is this will more or less remain constant at when it's fully stable. So, this 1.6 crores of PBT at most will go to 1.7 crores. Cash break-even will happen at 1.35 crores and cash plus repayment of principal at 1.6 crores. Which means effectively, if you compare this with pre-COVID, we expect that on a fully normal basis, based on permanent structural cost changes we have uh, put in place, our EBITDA margins on an apple-to-apple -apple basis would have expanded by about 120 crores a year. So our expectation is that once we hit 1.6 to 1.7 crores revenue, which is about 15 20%, 15% over where we are today, then we will be PBT break even and cash positive by about 130, 140 crores a year. So that's what we are really looking forward to in the next three to four months. Then, of course, the question is when do we get back to pre COVID levels of revenue? I'm pretty sanguine that it will happen 
in Q in H1 next year, we should be there. At which point, obviously, we will be that. Uh, so, so the if the understanding is correct, as uh, pre-COVID sort of revenue level will be in the between 42 to 43 percent sort of a better margin. That is the sort of operating leverage we can get in terms 45. of efficiency. 45. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. So the second question was for, for our uh, Mumbai hotel, the Orica. So by when do we uh, see the how the capex plan shaping up over there, and when do we see it uh, getting operational? So if you look at our cash position, when we raised 175 crores from APG last year in uh, May, yeah, we had about 200 crores of cash. Currently, I think we are sitting on a little over 100 crores of cash, which tells you really in the last. 18 months, we have been cash out by about 100 crores. We were, we were being conservative on the cash consumption uh, towards uh, the Mumbai property because we were not sure whether uh, wave two, you know, there would be a, a, a more significant wave three and so on, like I think the rest of India. So we have continued building Orica with a single perspective, which is we will open Bombay sometime in ca mid, mid to late calendar. 23, which is, say, one and a half to two years from now. And we are very much on target. So we have currently, I think, consumed about 380 crores. And uh, we were going slow on the... See, right now, our cash consumption is not significant because it is still building a shell. Our significant cash consumption should happen by about June next year when we start finishing the hotel, at which stage we are fairly confident that we will have sufficient positive cash flows beyond debt servicing to fund another two to 300 crores for this hotel. So going forward, acceleration will happen. Uh, first level uh, in Q4, second level by June next year. And our intent is that somewhere between, well, let's take a uh, month open this hotel plus minus one or two months in 2023. Okay. Okay, sure. So that was very helpful. Yeah. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nihal Dham from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much and good afternoon to the management. So one thing you alluded in your opening remarks is obviously in terms of the expectation that rates start uh, improving in the current quarter and you obviously segregated the demand also as per the various segments. Would it be right to say that the key driver or the key variable here would be that corporate demand comes back and that potentially becomes uh, the trigger to rate improvement and the base occupancy? Is, is that the right way to think about how things will pan out or, or there are some other levers you want to highlight? See, the way to see it is to look at aggregate demand. If aggregate dem See, right now, corporate demand is uh, north of 50% of pre-COVID. As I said, it was 1,500. Today, it is running at 800. We are expecting after Diwali, it will start hitting 900 to 1,000. And we expect that by Q4, it will cross 1,200. If that occurs, then we will be at a point where there will be a very significant change in our retail rates. And yes, uh, that will, uh, you see, because rates change when aggregate demand, not segment demand picks up. So as I mentioned, our current run rate is we are 20% in ARR over Q2. And I expect this will just continue to increase. And in my opening remarks, yes, you're right. I mentioned our main focus will be increasing ARRs, uh, targeting pre-COVID levels within the next six to nine months, which was about 4,800 rupees. Understood. So, and and uh, so the, the other question is obviously just you know taking a step back pre-COVID, uh, one thing or an aspect of inventory was that there was a significant focus at least in terms of having our own inventory, in terms of obviously how cycle play out. Now while it's it's obviously still long way ahead to the cycle recovery, but we do notice that there has been a strong traction in the management contract side in terms of how many rooms they are adding. Also, I think a reflection of the brand how it has turned out, but just. As the cycle turns and things improve, do we see that lemon tree will go back to the aggression of adding own rooms or there is a potential possibility in the future that MC will be the key driver and after that, actually the own room expansion will be calibrated? See, as far as possible, we will try and sweat our assets. So just since you raised this point, let me give you an interesting 
statistic of the 5200 rooms that we currently own 60 65% is what we call old old inventory which is uh, pre 3 years right. that accounted for only 50% of the capital deployed okay so we built these first 3400 odd rooms at 50 lakhs a key yes the next one third of the inventory was built at close to double that price okay so here's the funny thing two thirds of our inventory is old which was at 50 lakhs a key one third of that inventory is new which was at 1 crore a key so in the total deployment of capital it skewed towards new hotels because the replacement cost is really shooting through the roof cement steel name it everything is going up so clearly we are now at that inflection point because unlike i think most other hotel companies in india we were in the midst of a very large capex cycle in the last four years and it was unfortunate that covid hit just when we were starting to hit two and a half crores a day my expectation is that it will become increasingly unviable to build new supply in india at the current uh, investment versus the current returns so that will be a perfect opportunity for us actually to cream our existing supply uh, own supply rather than build new supply the only way we would look at new supply would be asset light or in partnership with distress funds where we would put in no capital as far as possible Sure. Just, just a related question. So currently, you're saying the replacement cost of, say, the mid-scale category to say earlier 50 lakhs is now short of to 70, 75 lakhs on average. No, one crore. One crore. That's sure. Perfect. So that will be it from my side. I'll come back in the queue for the question. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Lakhan from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, I just wanted uh, uh, some some explanation on in terms of like, you know, what are you expecting uh, will drive the ADR recovery uh, to the pre-COVID levels in the next nine months? I understand, you know, uh, in your earlier remarks, you highlighted that you know, you're expecting the corporate recovery, thing, but, but uh, you know, to assume that corporate recovery will go back to the pre-COVID level, uh, you know, kind of attraction, uh, is it too far-fetched to assume that to happen too early? I would I would suggest again that we don't look at individual segments. Let's look at the absolute uh, demand. So let me come back to a point I made earlier. With this pre-COVID, we were doing 3,200 rooms in those three months of December, January, February, December 19, January, February 20. Today we are at 3,000 rooms. But corporate demand is from 1,500 pre-COVID is down to 800. Correct. which means in spite of 700 rooms of 50% of corporate demand not being back, we are only 6% away from pre-COVID levels of occupancy. What does this mean? It means that if retail continues to grow at this rate, and this has been happening, by the way, for the last four years, not only pre-COVID, but even if you look at us two years before pre-COVID, corporate demand, I mean, retail demand was growing at 20% a year for our company. My view is that retail will more than compensate for any shortfall in corporate to pre-COVID levels. And that's the key point I'm making. Retail A is a higher yield segment, B is a faster growing segment. And my view is that, and I'm very, very bullish on this, which is that retail will, retail plus corporate put together pre-COVID and, and three, six months from now, those two put together will be 15 or 20 percent higher than pre-COVID. So it's not only corporate. I'm talking about the two large segments that drive demand in our our hotels. Sure. So that's that's very helpful. Um, secondly, I uh, also wanted to understand like how is the with you know going into the festive season and then you know uh, December and then Q4. Uh, how are you looking at uh, demand for you know banquet bookings and, and, and things like that? Very good. See, we are still under certain restrictions. We turned away a large number of bookings because we, uh, uh, you know, for example, in Delhi, we cannot have more than 100 uh, guests in any banquet function. My view is this is going to change in the next two months. The key is that once 
you know, COVID appears to be under control, uh, there will be this huge upsurge in uh, these large block bookings. We already have some tentative booking. Uh, uh, there are some nice, uh, what are called Shaya dates. So we have weddings. We have, I think, two or three weddings booked this month, this coming month in uh, Udaipur, which are buyouts, which means, they, you know, it's a crore per, per wedding. Uh, my view is that this too will really take off in Q4. Because we are at that stage where, you know, there is still a question. Today I read in the papers there is some further variant of Delta. It's being monitored. So I would not like to comment for the next two months. But assuming that this continues, what is happening, then I'm pretty sure Q4 will be a very, very, very strong bank. Much stronger than Q4 pre-COVID. Sure, sure. And, and one last question, actually a data point, uh, just reconfirming what you said uh, earlier. So you said that, you know, once... Uh, uh, the, once we reach steady state, the EBITDA margins would be 45%, and based on that, our cash plus you know principal break even would be about 1.6 crore per day. Uh, uh, that no, PBT break even would be 1.7 crores a day. Cash break even would be about 1.35 crores a day, and cash plus repayment of principal break even would be about 1.6 crores a day, which is about 20% less than pre-COVID in all cases. Got it, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. The next question is from the line of Suman Kumar from Mutila Laswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, my question, uh, the, my observation from your PPT, uh, the key, uh, the lower brand like Red Fox and Keys occupancy recovery uh, uh, compared to uh, Q2 FY21, compared to a uh, previous year. So this mm -hmm. quarter we have seen a significant YY improvement in the premium category, particularly you have uh, Orica and Lemon Tree compared to Red Fox and Keys. So what was the key reason, number one? Number two, is there any, uh, because of the ARR lo lower compared to your, uh, or uh, a similar kind of ARR you have, uh, say a uh, lemon tree hotels and premium that was the key reason or any other reason for higher occupancy of lemon tree premium premier the way to look at it suman is by region by location by micro market whether it's a red fox or a lemon tree or an orica if it is in a market which is struggling it will have a lower increase and if it's in a good market it will have a higher increase just look at it from that so it's not brand dependent it is market dependent so if you, I mean, let me give you an analogy. If you talk to, you know, three airline companies, uh, you know, maybe all of them are operating Delhi, I don't know, Delhi, uh, Calcutta, and there the, you know, the share, the rate, the price increase may be only 5%, irrespective of whether it's low cost or full fare, whereas Delhi, Bombay may go at 30%. So it's market driven, demand driven, rather than brand or segment driven. Okay. Now, uh, talking about, uh, you are talking about retail uh, participation or retail mix for lemon tree is going to be a 15-20% higher than pre-pandemic level. So, how sustainable is this mix uh, when you talk about, uh, we have seen the pre-pandemic also, our retail mix was increasing, uh, particularly. So, going forward, uh, what new trend you are looking for and what the customer mix is going to change for entire industry and for lemon, lemon tree? See, it's interesting you're asking this. So we are finding that the average age of our retail customer is coming down. Number one. Number two, it's a catch-up. So if retail was growing at 15% or 20% a year pre-pandemic, pre uh, it, uh, it, it, it slowed down obviously in the one year uh, till, till the end of the second wave. And then it just, just ramped up. So if you look at retail on a, as a number, in uh, pre-COVID, it was 1,200 rooms, and no doubt, if you go four or five years back, it might have been four or 500 rooms a day. That jumped to 12, but in Q2, that went up by 25% from pre-COVID, which means it really went up maybe 300% from or 400% from uh, during COVID, because that was the time it really slowed down. So I'm trying to give you a flavor of what's happening. I am saying that retail, which includes both business, leisure, staycations, you name it, went from 1,200 pre-COVID to 1,500 in Q2. 
and is now trending towards 1800. So it's a nearly a 50% or a 50% hike from pre-COVID. So what is the mix currently? The retail and corporate and others? See, co- co- uh, there are a bunch of well, a lot of gig economy, individual traveling. There's vacation, there's leisure. So I don't offhand have the breakdown, but the majority is uh, is individuals who are traveling, you know, and paying themselves. So in Q1, you I think you talked about 40% retail customer. Yeah, but Q1 was an absurd time to compare because you know that was in the middle of the second uh, the second wave. So Q1 I think has to be treated as an aberration, not as a as a comparison. I would much prefer that we look at Q2, Q3, and now going forward Q4 from pre-COVID to now the catch up. So do you think the the kind of growth we have seen in retail participation and higher growth? You are talking about the 20 to 20 25% kind of growth. Uh, and pre-pandemic, you are talking about the 20% uh, mix is going to increase, or 20% growth will be there. So, do you think the moderation in cup uh, in a year when the overall outbound is going to start? So, in that case, uh, retail uh, mix. What we are seeing in this um, in this scenario, or maybe in FY22, is going to moderate from uh, from the current mix. See, what will happen is, I suspect that. The next financial year will be a hockey stick year for hotels, and uh, and it, it, there will be. I mean, right now you're seeing a V-shaped recovery, but a V-shaped recovery from a very low base. This recovery will be from a medium to a high base. When that happens, prices will go up suddenly, and a lot of customers who were earlier staying in, um, you know, three-star hotels who are currently staying in four-star or five-star hotels will shift down. Similarly, customers who were earlier staying in one-star, two-star hotels or guest houses who are now staying in a Red Fox or a, a, a relatively low-priced lemon tree will shift down. So there will be this price-based shift in demand, uh, and uh, we will get business from you know guys who have traded up, and people uh, a level below us will get business from customers who were their customers who traded up to us today. But all will do pricing in such a way so as not to disturb the occupancy. So it's not that we will suddenly double our average rate and lose half our customers. This will happen, you know, maybe a 20% increase in retail demand. A pricing will happen, which will lead to a 10-15% fall in demand. But ultimately, the intention will be to maximize revenue. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Kumar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Um, I have a few questions. First of all, um, of course, we talked about uh, the retail uh, business offsetting for the loss of the business uh, traffic or for corporate demand. Um, um, so, uh, so first of all, um, I want to understand: uh, Do you think? Uh, do you think overall? uh generally the tightness of the supply and favorable demand could also help uh, the arr and the occupancy levels as you said that you know the construction is not going to happen and probably some of the hotels might be sitting with the financial stress so maybe some of the capacity might go out of the of the space and then you know probably that could help demand supply balance do you think uh, that could also happen positively for the for the industry so that is my first question Secondly, um, in terms of the corporate demand, when you say you have already uh, reached 50% um, of the corporate demand, um, although if we talk to airlines, usually the feedback is that the corporate demand has started to pick up, but it's very very low. So what? So I mean, exactly what sort of corporate demand? Uh, Uh, do you notice i mean you know uh, because if airlines are saying that there's no corporate has not started traveling so what what sort of corporate demand is it i mean are you talking about sort of msme sector um, you know so so what exactly are talking about if, so if you could please uh, help me understand these, these two things so i link three things first is what you said about demand supply so demand is recovering it is recovering more in some segments is delayed in some segments like corporate to answer the third question now the corporate demand pickup that we are seeing is mostly msme 
and a few large corporates who have started but have not reached their pre-COVID levels, which is why we are still maybe 55% of pre-COVID levels of corporate demand. Number two, as far as supply goes, existing supply, yes, there is a lot of distress. How it plays off is, is I mean, my guess is as good as yours, but I reckon there will be a delay in operationalizing supply in India, which will play out over the next year to two. Third, new supply. See, the point is, if it costs a crore of rupees to build a hotel today, even with relatively low interest rates, you would like a return of 14, 15 lakhs a key. If you're not going to get that, you're not going to build a hotel. So till demand and average rates catch up, that you can generate a EBITDA per room of 14 lakhs or so, nobody is going to build new hotels at one crore a room. So that's a self, I mean, it's a, it's a question that answers itself. Therefore, I do see demand, uh, supply uh, constrained for the next three to four years. Now, when we come back to 14, 15, 16 lakhs a key, then yes, a whole bunch of new supply will be planned, but again, it'll take another four years to come back. So it's a classic commodity cycle uh, perspective that you have to apply from the real estate side. Now, coming to demand, as I said, if you look at how pricing uh, occurs, if you look at us, say, from Q2 last year to Q2 this year, the ARR went up by, you know, 15%. The occupancy went up by 70%. So first occupancy, then price. So uh, as I said, occupancy obviously will not grow by another 70% from 50 to 85 in this quarter. But already pricing is now following, which means that in this first, you know, 25 days of October, we already see a 20% hike in average rates from quarter two. So it's a, it's a dynamic situation, one feeds the other. My broad guess is that when the large corporates start fully, uh, to the extent that they will, which may not be the full pre-pandemic level, but maybe 80, 90% of that, then you will see sharp hikes in pricing, and that I am very confident will occur in Q4 this year. Right, uh, but then um, following on the on the distress uh, point, so um, if there are a lot of assets, uh, a lot of uh, there is there is a lot of distress in the market. Do you do you think that could open up an opportunity for you to grab uh, properties on the management contract? At much reasonable price. I mean, do you see that? I mean, because if it is, a, if, it is a, if if there is a, so much of distress, I think the players with the strong financial muscles like you could actually um, get an opportunity to grab the assets at the right price. So that is that is oh, on that also. If, uh, I would appreciate your comment. And and finally, I would also uh, like to hear your thoughts about the recovery in the international demand. So how um, do, do you think, um, do, what, what is your opinion in terms of recovery in the international demand and uh, what will offset uh, the loss of international demand for you? Okay, so let me start with capital deployment and then international. Yeah. In the last one and a half years, the maximum criticism that Lemontry has received is that it has got A, high debt, B, it's capital intensive. Both are right. The only difference, and I'm pointing it out again, is it's a timing issue. We opened 35% of our inventory. One third of our inventory opened 12 months before COVID or was operationalized. So what was capital work in progress suddenly became capital and debt also increased appropriately. But my broader point is what is the debt that we have? We have what is our debt today? 1,700 crores or 5,200 rooms is 32, 33 lakhs a key. When today, if I build a hotel, I need a crore a room. So obviously, uh, the debt was heavy because my book value was much more than any other peer. Because all my hotels were opening, you know, I was in the middle of a capex cycle, for which there was an enormous amount of criticism by people, many of them in this uh, call. But we had to still persevere because we knew that when that cycle you know, when, when the demand gets, the supply gets absorbed, then these hotels will generate enormous amounts of profit. Keep in mind, 2.4 crores a day in the last quarter of, uh, of, uh, of FY20 was with all our hotels not being stable. We reckon that on a full stable basis, pre-COVID, it should have been 3 crores a day. 
that did not occur because of covid so my i think we've learned our lesson if the market does not want us to or analysts don't want us to invest more capital we are quite cool about not doing it anyway we are very asset heavy uh, when we finish with the mumbai hotel and shimla we will have 6000 owned rooms which uh, is a large enough number and obviously now we want to monetize our uh, brand now because we built a large enough brand and a popular enough brand as is evident from the fact that we are getting such a large amount of retail demand so we will definitely only look at asset light we will also look at a way to recycle capital out of our asset heavy side so right now we own 60% of 3500 rooms we own 100% of another 1700 rooms we will look at ways to lighten to remove capital out of that business and return it to shareholders in some form so that's our broad strategy and the only other thing we have said is we are going to invest some capital in maximize doing in digitally transforming our company in the next 18 months uh, as you as i said earlier we are working closely with bcg we are looking at significant revenue enhancements in this market and that's what we are focused on so achan i'm trying to answer that in a in a in a in a, from a strategic perspective not only from a capital perspective as far as uh, international demand goes let's see 15th of november onwards what happens my view is it will still take 6 months to a year but i'm reasonably sure by october next year international travel will will have come back in india right um, no sir uh, so, so, sorry um, um follow up on that so first of all um, in terms of owning i mean yes i understand that you are uh, sort of not uh, trying to own any more hotels but even on the management contract um i mean if there is a draft i'm sure you can uh, you can find the agreement on a, on a much favorable terms that is what i was i was asking um on the on the international side uh, so what exactly how much how much of your business was coming from the international uh, tourism um, and what uh, will offset that loss that is that was my question actually sorry we have very little international business that is elementary it was 10% or 12% and uh, we have more than see let me summarize from retail alone retail has grown by 550 rooms a day from pre covid to today and has more as about compensated corporate and large uh, large corporates my view is that large corporates are now going to come and between that revival of uh, large corporate demand and uh, block bookings my view is it will more than compensate for that 10% loss of international travelers right okay sir perfect thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of abhinav rathi from c worldwide asset management please go ahead thank you um uh, very interesting presentation uh, could could you talk a little bit about your loyalty program um i know you had uh, amassed a large base in a very short span of time and has that loyalty program actually uh been uh, been loyal uh, during during the pandemic with this sharp growth in retail that you have seen what percentage of these retail uh, guests are are, are your uh, loyalty members about 30% are our loyalty members uh we have um, frankly abhin now we have slowed down our investments because the kind of customers we had uh, from uh, covid wave 1 to covid wave 2 those 15 months uh many of them as you know were not our regular customers because in those periods there were very large amounts of healthcare professionals quarantine guests and so on and so forth so we have about a month ago revived our investments in uh, loyalty program uh, and uh, uh, it's very much a part of the bcg uh, uh assignment and uh, it's actually Uh, an aggregate of a loyalty b revenue management which is ionic based rather than forecasting based and all of it is actually part of one single assignment and i think you will start seeing the results very shortly in another 2 to 3 months you will start seeing uh, uh, the aggregate of this playing out so um, i'd be very happy if you ever in delhi pop by i'll explain it to you i know you're an investor in our company um uh, uh, but uh, difficult for me to explain right now because it's a it's, it's such an interesting assignment that if when you come there i can i can actually show it to you what is happening 
sure. I, I, I look forward to that. Um, now, now that now that you're also sort of alluding to a, a very strong recovery by Q4, uh, and you had very impressively, you know, cut down your cost last year. Uh, what percentage or what kind of some of these cost cuts would make a comeback as you know as we move towards uh, you know a, a closer to a complete recovery? So, at a PBT level, I reckon at 1.7 crores, we will be PBT zero. At 1.35 crores, we will be cash zero. So really, we are talking about a 20-25% fall from pre-COVID. And that's a permanent drop. Mm -hmm. Or to put it in a number, it's about 100 but to some 100 of some... a year. Okay. But, but some of these cost cuts, uh, you know, that you had done with regard to simple things like elevator management, water pressure, and so on and so forth, some of those those cost cuts would make a comeback, right, with more occupancy now in, in, in the hotels? Yes, some will, some won't. So, to give you an idea, our staffing used to be 8,500 people for 8,500 or one person per room. Today, it is 0.6, and at full occupancy, it will be 0.7. So we'll knock off about 30% of our staff, but because these are uh, mid-level staff, in uh, cost terms, it will save about 22% of our wage bill. Now, as you know, the wage bill is about 20% of our revenue, so that's 45 to 5% of revenue of EBITDA expansion. In power and fuel, it will be about 2% of the 10 that we spend normally on power, which means... Uh, 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 an EBITDA margin expansion of another 2% on revenue. In other cases, we reckon it will be about 4 to 5%. Earlier, we thought it would be 2 to 3 So, put together, I reckon our EBITDA margins will expand by anywhere from 11 to 15%. Great. Uh, that's very interesting. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. The next question is from the line of Nihal Jam from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much. So I just had one clarification. When you speak of retail, what exactly is, is the nature of, of that demand? As I would understand, it would mainly be leisure or staycation travelers, or are you including your MSME corporates also as a part of that segment? So when we said that, see, it is the question is who is booking through what? So when we say, uh, in Q2, retail was 1,500 rooms a day, and corporate was 650. Uh, some of that corporate would be via the retail. That I mean, now the question is, what are you defining as corporate? What about a small company of four people who book us from Chandigarh and book through, you know, through our website or through our call center or through an online travel agent? Uh, it is impossible for us then to. I mean, we will treat them as a part of retail. So corporates are corporate rates. Those companies we have given corporate rates to, whether they are large or small. And that's why I can say it's the small corporates that account for 80, 90% of these 650 rooms a day. Then there are even smaller, maybe, you know, individuals who are self-employed, who come part of the gig economy. They come here and they stay with us, but they book as retail customers, which is why retail is a mix of every segment. Understood. And, and uh, just if uh, there is any sense that out of this uh, 1,500 you're currently doing and it's going to 1,800, what would we say the nature of pure leisure or say staycation, which maybe potentially is the kind of demand that may not sustain in the future, just if that's the right way to think of it. Okay, so let me go back for a moment. What is our leisure portfolio in terms of the owned assets? So if I look at pure leisure, it is about 8% of our portfolio, about 400 odd rooms out of these 5,200 rooms. But then there are other hotels where we have leisure visitors, but those hotels are not leisure hotels, like Delhi. For example, in Delhi at any given time, there will be 40, 50, 60 people staying here who would be coming for leisure reasons, but uh, are not coming to a leisure destination. Similarly, Bombay, similarly, uh, you know, places uh, across India. So it's our broad guess is that our leisure travel today may be, including staycations, maybe 15, 18% of our total demand. 
my guess is that uh, including when prices go up, one is vacations will reduce to a bunch of customers who would otherwise have stayed with us at, uh, you know, at 3,600 rupee ARR will not stay with us at 5,000 bucks. So there will be some loss. But what I'm trying to say is this is very dynamic. And this is revenue management, which means we increase our prices just enough not to affect demand, rather than increase prices and have a loss of, a significant loss of demand. So we will look at maximizing rest bar. Understood. Very clear. Thank you so much, sir. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Kumar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sir. Last question. Um, um, so, in case um, now the hybrid working is being promoted by the companies and the people have started combining hotel with uh, uh, buying work with leisure. So, um, uh, previously, I understand that you said that uh, during the last call that the average stay length has increased because the people have started combining work with leisure. So, they go to stay with the hotel. And so, they work for two days and, and enjoy leisure for three days, so something like that. So, now, what? Uh, how do you see, I mean, do you see the average length of the stay is going down? as the things are opening up or how do you see this uh, the scale average length of the stay is going changing i think average length is probably reduced slightly in our case because long stay demand from corporates has reduced so i'm sorry i don't have a, a figure right now as to what is the average length of stay in elementary but it may be 0 0.2, 0 0.3 less than what it was earlier. So earlier it was 2.7, 2.8. I reckon it is the early schools now, 2.2, 2.3. IT hiring was a big loss. Yeah, so IT hiring for us in Bangalore and in Hyderabad and in Gurgaon used to typically be 200 to 300 rooms for the months of summer. That didn't occur this summer. But next summer we are told it's coming back. So uh, then length of stay goes up because it's weighted because, you know, Something like 6% of our demand and the average length of stay is 100 rooms, 100 nights. But broadly, I think uh, 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 leisure travel is happening. There are people who come for work and then hang on for a day or two more because they just want to get out of their homes. But I would like to actually be very specific here. I am not sure this is a long term thing. I am reasonably sure that if large corporates were 20% of our business pre COVID, well, I reckon they'll drop to 13, 14% post COVID. One is because we'll take our prices up and, you know, they, they, they may not want us at those higher prices. And number two is because of work from home or flexi timings and so on. But that's only 7% of our business. Retail, which is 55% of our business, will by then be 65 or 70 at higher rates. So I am very confident that it will be more than compensated by the growth of discretionary retail demand. And interestingly, if you look at China, about 14 years ago, 2006, 7, 8, this happened in China, that retail demand really took off and it became, it became the single most important segment in China. And I reckon it's going to happen in India. You're seeing it even in the stock market, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question at this time. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star followed by one. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So thank you, everybody. As usual, I've enjoyed uh, hearing your questions. Uh, and I look forward to our next conversation, uh, post our results in February uh, next year. And have a happy new year and a wonderful Diwali. Thank you. On behalf of Lemontry Hotels Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.